Hello everybody, how are you? I um, am doing a little video here today. I'm gonna to squat down here so you can see me, hello. Um, I wanted to uh, just talk about what I've done in this treatment so far and what I'm going to be doing today. So the first thing is I've done a full cleansing facial on my model. Um, we, uh, we cleansed with a K cleanser. I did the exfoliating mask, mixed it with a little bit of healing gel. Uh, I then removed that with cold water and sponges. I then did a little bit of the retinoid formula, mixed it with the Q flavonoid, and I'll show you what that looks like exactly. Um, here we have these two products here. So these were the two that I used, mixed them together. And I worked that into the skin for quite some time. Uh, I massaged in just those two products and remember it had a little bit of the healing gel on first, massaged it into the skin for a little while, um, probably about five minutes actually just working it into the skin. I put a little bit of the eye gel, rejuve eye gel around the eyes which is so great. And I don't know if you go back on uh, some of the videos I've done on this particular model that I have here today, you will see just how much better her skin looks. We did a peel on her a few months back. Um, the, you know, and this is after extraction, so right now she's a little bit red, but if you go back and look, you can see how much her skin has improved since when we first started. And in particular, also around the eye area, you can see we've really lightened up that darkness around her eyes, which is just fantastic. And it's consistently just a lot less dark. So, um, so after I worked in the Q flavonoid, the retinal formula, had a little bit of healing gel on the skin, I added a little bit of my massage cream, which I used the hydrating mask. Um, I massaged her skin with that. And we did, um, you know, probably about a 15 minute massage on her skin. And that helps to soften the sebum. I did not use steam today, but the just massaging helps to soften some of the more um, this more stubborn um, bumps under the skin, sebum that's hardened over the years. And then after that, I used warm towels. I did extractions. We got a couple of little milliers out on her face. Um, but also there's a, a couple of areas that she has this stubborn and she's um, you know, spoken about this in the past, a stubborn one that consistently comes back, which is over here on the cheek, which you're looking at over here. And it is a plug that is just always there. Um, she said sometimes she can feel it starting to, to fill up and she has one on the other cheek too that's not quite as deep. So today I wanted the camera on the other side so you could actually see this area where she's had this stubborn one that's consistently fills up. Uh, so we've done a lot of extractions on her today and she, so she's a little bit pink. Um, we also, after the extractions, I did do the normalizing formula. I spotted that on some of the areas where she was a little bit more congested. Not that she has a lot, she didn't have a lot of extractions, but just little blackheads, normal. And then, uh, and then I used a fruit complex number one on the rest of the areas, but I did do the normalizing around here. Um, and that stayed on the skin for a good five minutes. I then removed it with cold water. And now we have, um, now we've got a clean slate here. I'm about to put on the pearl silk mask. So I want to show you how I mix it, how I put that on, um, this, you know, different ways uh, that I do it a little, you know, sometimes. So I wanted to show you the pearl silk is a brightening mask. It's got a lot of, nutrients in it, um, amino acids and minerals and pearls have just an enormous amount of benefit to the skin. It's, it's such a great brightener and it's also really healing on the skin. So this is a mask I'm doing today to show you. Uh, so that's where we're at and we are about to, we've got a clean slate here, um, ready to put on the pearl silk mask. So before I go ahead here, I just wanna show you what the pearl silk mask um, this is all Rejuvi that I use because that's my product line of choice, my treatment line. So this is a pearl silk mask. It does have a little bit of lavender in it. And if you look, you can see the little lavender petals inside there. And what we are going to do is, is take one scoop of the pearl silk mask here. So one scoop, here we go. And I'm going to put it into my bowl. Um, I have a rubber bowl right here. It does, um, 
the actual product itself comes with spatulas, little white spatulas, but I like to use a disposable tongue depressor, which is what I'm going to use here today. So we've got the one, the one scoop of the mask and, and I'm just going to prepare the skin before I add the water because it takes a minute to mix the mask once you've, you've actually um, added the water. It does take a minute to mix. It's quite runny for a while and then it starts to set pretty quickly. So I just want to show you how all of that works. So in preparation of the skin now that we've got the skin clean, I like to put on a small amount of healing gel. And in particular, I'm just going to put it around the perimeter of her face because I want to um, attach something to the skin there so that it doesn't move and it protects the hairline. So this is a gauze that I'm using, my 4x4 gauze. And I like to just put it around the hairline like this um, so that that is just in protecting of the hair and keeping everything nice. Now, the other things that I like to do is, again, I've got this thicker kind of gauze. I like to put it down here. The mask can be quite runny, so I want to just protect, uh, make sure it doesn't go into her ears, which is uncomfortable. Just protect those areas there, cover those areas. And then the next thing is I'm going to put on cotton pads over the eyes. And these ones are slightly dampened. And this is just, again, to protect because the mask can be quite um, runny. Um, you know, and it can kind of move around a little bit. I just want to make sure that uh, we're protecting all these areas here. So now that we've got that ready, I've got my scoop in here. You can see a little bit of the, um, just a little bit of paper in there from before. Oh, there we go. So there's my, there's my, um, my pearl silk powder. Now this is three times the uh, the amount uh, to the one. So I've got three scoops of water here in this little flask to one scoop of it here. And now we're going to start mixing it. So it all goes in together. And it just, as I said, it just takes a moment to mix. I'm going to pull this out over here, away from, so I'm not so close to my client's head, but still so you can see what I'm doing here. And you just mix it quite vigorously for a little bit. And uh, before we go to put on. But as I said, loaded with nutrients. Um, it's a really beautiful, beautiful mask. I really love Pearl Silk. I've worked with Pearl Silk products for a long time, particularly masks. Um, they're just really uh, incredibly healing. And I, I just really love the brightening that it can really help to lighten up melasma and just work with blotchy, uneven skin tones. So I really am such a fan. So here, now we're finding it's starting to thicken here now, and we're going to start with it on the face. Now, the nice thing here is that when you have a rubber bowl, you can use it as a spout here, and this is what I'm going to do. So as we start here now, Once I um, have got it on everywhere, I'm going to go back and get it a little closer to the eyes and you'll see how I'm going to do that. I'm going to lift the pad up, make sure I've got it up close underneath the eyes where we all get those fine little wrinkles, expression wrinkles underneath the eyes there. Now, if you want to do the neck area and some down onto the decollete, of course, you could double the application and put two scoops of the powder in to six scoops of the water. So you would just be doubling it. And certainly that's a nice thing to do. It's always nice to treat the neck area, especially as we get older, you really start to uh, want to, you know, make sure you pay attention to that because it's an area that is very bothersome 
and me being in my 60s I can assure you it is one of my main areas that I always want to make sure I'm working on um, so again I'm just putting this up here making sure we've covered all of this area now the little bit here I'm going to go on to above the lip area here so we're going to take this across the lip and I leave the lip until the last because I want it to be as least runny as possible so it's not sort of running down into the mouth area and being uncomfortable for my client and now as I mentioned before I'm going to just put my bowl down there I'm going to lift up this pad I do want to get a little closer up underneath the eye here and you can see how I'm doing that um, just holding the pad up and just getting that area there by the wrinkles and also you know just making sure that we've got it really well around the sides of the nose so I'm just gonna put some on the other side lift up that pad and I have just the perfect amount here for the whole face and I'm just lifting this pad up putting this up here under the eye area as well and we are good to go okay so we have that on now if you look closely you can see there's little bits of the lavender there um, these little greenish bits here you can see on the face that is lavender now what I like to do once I've got it on the face I've taken more of this 4x4 four four gauze um, that initially comes in the packets and uh, and this is how so I open up the 4x4 four four gauze and I stretch it like out like this and now I'm going to lay this on over top of my mask and I'm just going to do it this way here again this is another piece I'm stretching it opening it up putting it down here around the chin area and I like to put it on the face after I've left the mask on for a moment stretching it out again laying this one over here and then another piece the same stretching it out and laying this one over here now I don't put the area that I've, I've torn it in half but you can see how this is all frayed on this side I'm not going to put it on this close to her nose because these little fibers can be irritating for the nose when you're sort of breathing in and out there so my smooth side is the side I'm putting close to the nose over here so there we go now once I've got this on I can then go ahead and press down on it which of course is really nice because this way I can mold it to my client's face. And I like to do that because I think that's really nice. It's nice to do that around here and just sort of mold it, hold it on the skin there like that. Um, and that's how we're, we mold it onto the face. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm gonna take a little bit more of that half gauze here, right? And I'm going to just tear down it only tears one way so I'm, I've torn a little bit off here I'm just going to fold that area over that is the frayed area right because again this is I'm going to put this above her lip but I don't want this to be next to her nose because that's going to be irritating so I'm just going to fold that over and I am going to use the bottom the neat side against her nose area so as we go on here I'm just going to put this down and that's going to just be that piece that stays over that area there again only so I can mold it in because as you know we all get those fine little wrinkles above the lip and this is a really nice you don't want to avoid the lip you always want to be treating the lip but you also want to work your product into those fine little lines that we happen to get around the lip area so once I've done this um, I can you can fold this up over here like this here and just really sort of hold that inside there. It gives you a nice frame here again. We're just gonna mold it down, hold it onto the skin and just mold it down like this. Now, once you've got that on, you can then take away these extra little pieces that were either side of the neck that were just aiding in protecting the mask from falling down, going down into the ear area or rolling down here on the sides of the face and then your client is good. Now this is going to stay on her skin and it will, I'm gonna leave it on for a good 15 minutes on the skin and then we're going to remove it. And while this is on the face, again, you can do
do, you know, you could put a nice mask on the decollete, maybe up onto the neck area where we did not put the pearl silk today. We could put a nice mask up here. Um, and uh, in fact, I might just do that while you're all on here with me today. Um, the other thing I will say before I do that, while you're, you've finished your application with your, your bowl, um, I like to clean out my bowl before it sets. So I've, um, you know, again, I like to clean, get the bulk of it out because once it sets, it's going to be harder to get it out and to keep it clean. You want to get the bulk of this out and then just dispose of the bits of mask that's in there. But this is something that's a good thing to do is just get it out of your bowl and, um, and then it's much easier to wash and then you don't have little bits of mask going down your sink which could then clog your drain. You want to be sort of mindful of all of these things, which of course, you know, especially if you're a new ESTE starting, you are not always thinking about things like this, but it is definitely something that's worth being mindful of because you're going to save yourself a, a visit from the plumber a little bit later, cleaning out your drain. So that's, um, that's important. Okay, so let's put a mask on her decollete while this is um, while this is going to set so I'm going to choose her decollete if you look she's got a little bit of sun damage here right you can see the line of the neck um, where uh, this area here is obviously getting sun particularly when you drive this is an area that really is um, very tricky you've got to really protect this area this is a thinner skin the neck the same it is very different from the skin on the face the skin on the face you can peel it you can do all kinds of amazing things that are a lot stronger than the neck. The neck skin is a very thin skin. It doesn't absorb product like, uh, you know, the face does. And the same with the decollete. And once this area is aged, it's very hard and very tricky. So it's always nice to do a nice treatment on this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, this mask, which is a firming mask, a facial firming mask. This has a little bit of retinol in it. And it's a nice mask as a, a treatment. Um, so we're just going to use a small amount of this. We have a noisy horn out there going on. So here we go. It's a very smooth mask, but again, it is a really nice mask. Um, it doesn't set super tight like a clay mask. Um, it's uh, very hydrating and it's a really, really nice mask for the neck area. As I said, it has a little retinol in it and retinol, as we know, is one of my most favorite ingredients that just gets to fibroblast cells. It really stimulates collagen and elastin, and that's always very, uh, very important. So we've got that mask on her, her decollete area there right now, and that's going to just stay on there. Um, I'm going to cover up, pull up the towel, cover her neck, get any wetness on this towel away from her, so she's feeling more comfortable. And we're just gonna leave that up there like this for the moment, um, do a foot massage. You can watch me do that foot massage. I will turn the camera around. You can actually watch me do that. And uh, let's keep moving. All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands and um, come back to you. All right, so um, washed my hands. Uh, I'm gonna just move the camera around slightly so you can see what I'm going to be doing next, which is going to be a foot massage. Here we go. I think we'll be able to see mostly what I'm doing there. All right, so let's... Now, whenever I touch the feet, I always like to use a warm towel so I have a towel out of my hot cabbie and I'm going to have so my warm towel. I'm going to go down here to the feet area um, and just pull this back here. And I might just up this camera tab. I'm not sure if you guys can see exactly what I'm doing, but let me put that up a little bit. There we go. Notice I have a sheet covering my blanket um, this really helps protect the blankets unless you're changing your blanket with every client. I have a sheet folding down and just making sure that my blanket stays clean. 
Now we're doing the feet down here. I again pull this back here um, over my blanket. I've got both feet down here and we are using a warm towel on the feet. And that's warm towel on the other foot here, doing that one as well. I like to get around the heel. And then what we're doing um, is I'm going to cover this one foot with a sheet, just separate her legs slightly here, cover that one foot because I'm not going to be working on that foot. And I'm just going to, you always want to be very conscious when you are working with your client because you want to be very mindful of the fact that your client feels everything. You want to make them feel comfortable, secure and safe on the bed. I have a slight heated blanket on the table as she likes it on her back and on her body. So I have a heated blanket here, um, but I've opened up this area and I'm still cupping the leg with the sheet, which is not allowing for, for her to feel uncomfortable in any way because when I massage the foot, I really like to do um, up to the knee area and massage that knee, which often gets very dry. Here I have the Rejuvi body lotion, and this is the one, I love it. Um, and this is the lotion I'm using. So and again, as I said, I like to cup that knee area Now I like to do a couple of moves on this foot. Uh, one is sort of I'm cupping the ankles here. Um, I like to do this move here. And then I also like to take the palm, this part of my hand, and roll it up and down the bottom of the foot while I have the other hand on the top. And I'm just rolling that other one. And just in this motion, going backwards and forwards like this underneath, Just like this and then another little move here it's very nice to always pay attention to the heels because the heels get very very dry so I always like to do this move around the heel area I like to use my thumbs now and I'm going to go up here on the ball of the feet and go in between the toes a little bit up here as we massage up here around this part of the foot Hold yourself properly. You've got to hold your back. I've got one foot in front of the other, really positioning, bending my knees here right now so I'm not leaning over, but really putting your body weight behind it. As a massage therapist, that's what you have to do so you don't have injuries. So once we've done this foot, pull the sheet up here. I like to, with the, just the sheet on, I like to go in between the toes, wipe the bottom of the foot just slightly, and then cover with the blanket. Okay, and then we're going to move to the other leg. Cupping the leg here, either side, so she's feeling comfortable. 
and rem remember we used a warm towel on this foot so it's clean and ready to go. Same with the hands. I always wipe the hands with a warm towel before I do the massage. I don't know about any of you guys, but my knees are not skinny. So what I do on my own knees is this inner part of the knee, it's nice to massage that area. When I go to have my pedicures, they always do my knees and massage that area. It's an area that I personally have extra flesh, extra fat. <laughs> so for me, I really love it when people massage my knees. So I'm always very conscious of that when I'm doing a foot massage because this knee area gets very dry, it gets discolored sometimes. And it's nice to be mindful of these things. Okay, we've done this foot now. We're going to get ready to, <clears throat> to take off the mask. I'm just going to do my little, my thumbs just up here underneath the toes and in between the toes there the sheet here going in between the toes just patting the bottom of the foot so that when they uh, do go to put their shoes on it's not too slippery that's important there we go so that's the foot massage I'm going to wash my hands right now and we're going to get ready to take off the mask on her face Just while I'm waiting for that mask a moment, I'm taking another clean towel here and I have a mat down by the bed here. I'm going to put a clean towel on the mat that my client can step onto once we are done. So these are just the things that are nice to do while you're waiting for the mask. So I'm going to move the camera back here now. going to get ready to take I want to wash my hands one more time and we're going to get ready to take this off to just mold it down one more time here before I go to remove it. There we go. And we are going to take it off here now. Now remember, I also have the mask on, um, on her decollete actually. So let's take that one off first. Again, we're going to leave that one on the face. So I forgot I had that one on there um, just to show you here. So let me take that one off first. And I'm going to do that with some warm towels, which I've just got out of my hot cabby. And uh, we're going to just, um, just lay that on top here now. We just leave that on there for the moment while we're taking this one off. 
just pulling it up here underneath and yeah got the little bits up sort of runs around the ear so let's just take this off here here we go and again you can see the little bits of lavender that are inside comes off there like this we've got always there's always a little bit around the nose area just pulling that off there and there's a little bit underneath and around the mouth area look how gorgeous her skin looks removing the little bits that are on the outsides here. We don't want to put the warm towels on the whole face. We want to leave that on, but if there's any little bits around the hairline, maybe around the ear that's fallen down, there's certainly a little bit around, tiny bits just around the mouth. We want to remove that and a little bit around the nose, just clean off any, any little bits that were left in those areas there. Okay. And after I take this off, I usually always put on the healing gels, especially when I've just worked on somebody that was a more oily skin. So the next thing that's going on is a little bit of healing gel. gel around the eyes while that healing gel is drying and this is my eye gel putting it up here around the eye The cream I'm choosing to use today is the Y cream and I love the Y cream. I love it for a more combination skin. It's just a beautiful, beautiful cream and I, I really love it. It's such a, a wonderful cream. I could also use the B lotion on her um, or the B moisturizer would also be fine. The B lotion is a lighter moisturizer, um, you know, that's comedogenic like, um, like these ones. And, but this is it. This is just a beautiful, beautiful cream. And then the next thing that I'm going to be putting on is a little bit of sunblock. Just going to let that settle in for a moment. Make sure we've got the cream on everywhere there. I'm just flip my towel over the other way and this back over here. Now we are getting a little bit of the sunscreen and I'm going to put a little lip gloss on her. The, this is the sun product. This is a tinted one. That's the next thing that's going on here right now. Now the areas when you're putting your sunscreen on that you want to make sure that you're being very mindful of is the areas that tend to get a lot of sun are going to be, especially if someone does not have bangs, um, there is going to be this area up here, right up high there, and the high cheekbones. So I'm going back here with a little extra up here and making sure that this area of the face, uh, we are really protecting this area. And if anybody has melasma, that is another area you wanna go back and you wanna put an extra coat on. My model does not have melasma, but these high cheekbone areas, these are the areas that really get sun. So you want to be incredibly mindful 
of these areas here because this gets a lot of sun up here. And the other area not to ignore is up here underneath the eyebrow. Um, this is an area that also gets sun and this is all aging. If you end up not using sunscreen in areas that UVA is going to age the skin and that's what happens. So you wanna be incredibly mindful of these areas, protecting these areas. I'll grab my towel and go back and just do get that out of her eyebrows a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead um, just and put on um, a lip balm. And then we are done. So I'm grabbing a lip balm. The one I'm using today um, has a little bit of some gold flicker bits in it. Um, you see some of the gold in there. And I always just get different lip balms. I like a lot of different ones. So it's just very, um, okay, that one there, as I said, that one has um, a little bit of the gold in it and uh, that's just something fun and nice. So there's our model skin. Um, we've done her facial today. So we've talked about this one here, this plug that fills up. Uh, sometimes that can be zapped at the dermatologist, these plugs, sometimes they like to cut them. But this one here, as she has kind of been dealing with it for many years and it just occasionally fills up, but her skin is looking really amazing. And um, that's it. So thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. And we'll be back to see you all again really soon. Bye.